Homo sapiens, the greatest species of the universe. From the humble beginnings of hunting and gathering to owning the freaking world. Humanity has, for example, managed to invent buildings, phones, fire, the wheel, quantum mechanics, heroin, and other highly addictive drugs which cause mass suffering. Airplanes, the electric light, dogs, or I mean those dogs who we have selectively bred so that they look cute but can't breathe properly and have blood disorders and neurological behavior and sensory problems. Movies, Minecraft, news. Only species to suicide? Wait, that's not even an invention. Slaughterhouses? For that man, who wrote this? The animation which occurs when you subscribe to an awesome random frog on the internet. Uh -huh. So it's quite clear that the modern way of living comes with a bunch of upsides and privileges that our ancestors did not have access to. So the question that I'm going to be asking today is, are these upsides worth the downsides which also comes with modern life? And should we have stayed as hunter-gatherers and never expanded? Or was it a smart choice of us to expand civilization as we have done it today? So let's start by figuring out some matrices we ought to look at when determining what type of system of living is preferable. I would say that some important stats are average life expectancy, sick rates, like how often your body doesn't work properly, depression rates, and suicide rates. But one problem is that we don't really have the statistics on, for example, depression rates when it comes to our ancestors. But we do have the statistics on people currently living the hunter-gatherer lifestyle. Those statistics are going to be a bit distorted though, but I think it's accurate enough, so it will do. So let's start by just looking at the average life of like a hunter-gatherer person. So you would probably wake up when the sun starts to rise. Then you would probably go out looking for berries and for fruits, or maybe you went hunting for fish or for other animals, but it wouldn't be a lot of work. The notion that hunter-gatherers are constantly busy hunting and are on the verge of death is actually false. They actually had more free time than we have today. For example, one deer would probably be enough to maintain a group of 30 people for about two days. And let's also think about that there were more animals wandering around back in the days. And combine that with vegetables and berries and fruits, and you start to see how small of a time investment the average person would have to sacrifice. The average work week was about 24 hours. Compare that to the average person's work work week in the modern industrialized world and it doesn't look that bad anymore. Now let's also think about the responsibilities. Right now we have more chores, more things to take care of than we had back then. And our responsibilities that we have now are also less meaningful. The reward of our actions in modern society is abstract and unclear. I mean, we get paid in money and practically money is just a piece of paper. Or no, actually, it's just ones and zeros now, right? So our body doesn't adapt to this in a very good way. And when our reward is not clear, that sort of messes up our neurochemistry. When you're training a dog, for example, you give them the reward clearly, right? You give them the food and the dog gets happy. But if the dog were to do good actions and you're not rewarding the dog clearly, then of course that's gonna affect the dog, right? It's gonna be so confused. Like, what the fuck? Good job, Charlie. That was a really good catch. So I'm now, as a reward, gonna give you the key to this MetaMask account with a bunch of NFTs on it worth $500,000. And now you can become a professional NFT trader. Or maybe you can sell it and invest in some safe real estate to make sure that your family is secured during this time of high inflation and high interest rates. Or maybe if you're feeling a bit more risky, you can buy an app Apple Watch and put the most expensive NFT on the Apple Watch to show everyone what a hardworking dog you are. Or you can buy my course. But of course, I mean, we're not dogs. We're more intelligent than dogs. And therefore, we can grasp these more arbitrary concepts like money. But our neurochemistry is still rooted on these primitive functions. So rewarding us with these external rewards won't make us as happy as rewarding us with the internal rewards instead. And not necessarily that reward either. I mean, when you think about it, when you're working at your job, you're most likely only a small cogwheel in a larger machine, right? So it's not clear what your content contributing to the job. But when it comes to hunter-gatherers, I mean, if you hunt the deer and you smoke that bitch, and then you bring it home to the family, I mean, the family's gonna be happy, you're gonna be happy, the deer is probably not gonna be happy, but now you have food, now your brain is working properly, I mean, dopamine is being released, serotonin is being released, and then you can have a good night's sleep without being interrupted by an alarm, which tells you to go up when probably, if you live in a colder country, the sun is not even up, right? You're waking up before the sun, and this alarm also increases your pulse a bunch, right? It's like getting hit in the fucking heart every morning, it's not good for you. <laughs> now, we can also think about the things we eat. I mean, our diets are not really optimized, we eat a bunch of sugar, we eat a bunch of saturated fats and all of these things just mess up our arteries, our insulin, our brains and I've actually not even started on the modern addictions. 
social media, video games, certain websites that I can't mention in this video, drugs, cigarettes, and this is just to name a few. And then we can also think about the social situation. I mean, there are literally old people dying alone right now because they don't have a family or like a secure social net. Compare that to the hunter gatherers and of course, they have people around them all the time, right? They're never gonna be lonely. Even though the density of people in cities are higher, I'm still gonna make the argument that we're more lonely right now, right? We're more alone. We spend more time alone. And instead we have these parasocial relationships over the internet. Now you can probably start to imagine why I titled the video as I did. Because humanity, civilization, we have worked so hard to innovate, to make our life better, to increase happiness. But still, it seems like the statistics are actually contradicting our decisions. And I don't know if I should laugh or whatever, but it's quite ironic, right? It might just be that we have done all of these things just to make ourselves more miserable. And I mean, that's kind of funny. I can't lie. Childhood mortality is one of the biggest issues when it comes to hunter-gatherer societies because of the lack of healthcare and cleanliness. And this is not only of course horrible, it also distorts the statistics and can cause one to indulge in something called selection bias when reasoning. The risk is that when people don't see that because so many young people die before becoming adults in hunter-gatherer societies, the survivors will already have a higher chance of for example having a stronger immune system, which means that they go on and live longer lives and have a lower odds of getting cancer for example. So you have around a 60% chance of surviving surviving to the age of 15, then you have a 60 to 80% chance of surviving to the age of 45. Then after 45, on average, you will live two decades more. Now let's take a look at the mental health statistics of hunter-gatherers. It seems like because of the small but stable communities people in hunter-gatherer societies are surrounded by, their mental health is actually considered exceptional by many. And suicide cases are also extremely rare. So maybe if you can combine modern medicine with primitive communities and the primitive work hours, then you might be able to build a perfect society, at least in terms of personal happiness. But yeah, that's about it. I would personally not want to go back to hunter-gatherer times, but it's an interesting question to ask. Please subscribe if you want more videos like this, and I will see you guys in the next one.